Tonight we have amongst us people who have dedicated their life to community work, both professionally and in a voluntary capacity. As the, these dinners are organised to share experiences, we have invited a few of you to share your thoughts this evening so that we can collectively strive towards social harmony. First in the lineup is one of our amazing guests, our guests of honour, in fact, um, to share their thoughts on the importance of dialogue, celebration of inclusion and social cohesion. Our guest of honour tonight is the Honourable Priyanka Radhakrishnan, MP for Mangakiki, Minister for the Community and Voluntary Sector, Diversity, Inclusion and Ethnic Communities and Youth. No mai, hare mai. Tina koto katoa, salamu alaikum, Ramadan Mubarak. Can I just begin by saying a huge thank you to our hosts, um, Pearl of the Island Foundation, um, and also my colleague, Michael Wood. Um, it's, it's always a pleasure to be here at the PIF Iftar dinners and other events over the years. It's a particular pleasure to be here with all of you in my electorate of Maunga Kekia, so welcome. Um, so just adding my acknowledgements to all those who've been acknowledged before, my parliamentary colleagues, my former parliamentary colleague, Mr. Bakshi, um, and also our commissioners who are here today, Ming Foon, Race Relations Commissioner, and also Sauno Mali E, Karanina Sumeo, our EEO Commissioner, who's here in the room uh, as well, and leaders from various faith and interfaith communities, our other elected officials who are here, councillors and local board members, just acknowledging all your presence here this evening. Um, Ramadan, of course, is um, a sacred month for our Muslim Fano. It's a time, as we've heard, for reflection, for mindfulness, abstinence, and giving back to community. That aspect of charity, I understand, is also really important during the month of Ramadan. Um, particularly when the fast is broken, at suhoor in the morning and iftar in the evening. I was also um, particularly pleased to sort of look at it in the aspect, I guess, from the perspective of community. Because Ramadan brings together, and just acknowledging the role of the PIF over years through your various events, your focus on bringing members of different communities together to learn a little bit more about each other and to break down some of those barriers. And particularly around the month of Ramadan, it is about community, families, and communities as well. That's what I see our Muslim communities uh, practicing. And in a diverse nation like ours, over 213 ethnicities, we collectively speak over 160 languages, it belong to a number of faith communities. I see that these events are powerful because they have the power to bring us together, to focus on the values that unite us. And I believe strongly that while we are stronger as a nation because of our diversity and not in spite of it, I also believe that when you dig a little deeper, the values that all of us share, there is so much more that unites us than that which divides us. And I see the work of the PIF focusing on that. What brings us together as well? And as was mentioned previously, the PIF was set up to celebrate diversity and to foster or promote social cohesion, two areas that are incredibly important for our government and were areas of work that I lead for our government as well. So I'm, I was so pleased to see particularly the value and celebration of diversity and social cohesion upfront in the ethos of the PIF. Because my vision for Aotearoa New Zealand is of a society where we all feel safe, where we feel valued, heard, where we're able to belong regardless of where we might have come from, the different languages we speak, the ways in which we may dress that identifies our ethnic or faith community, and equally importantly, where all of us are able to participate fully in every aspect of our society. So just really pleased to see, this is of course a collective effort, 
And so when I see the work of the Pearl of the Islands Foundation over the years, can I just take this opportunity, as I have at your events in the past, to say a heartfelt thank you to you and equally all the other organizations represented in this room where we're collectively working towards that goal. That is the goal of the government as well. And I'll just leave you with two initiatives that I think you might be interested in as well. Um, one, as the Minister for, the Divers for Diversity, Inclusion and the Ethnic Communities, I just wanted to share, some of you may know already, that as of the 1st of July this year, we will have a ministry for ethnic communities that will take the place of the current office Acknowledging also the many voices in this room and beyond this room who've been asking for this for many years and to thank you for your perseverance in that. The new ministry will maintain some of the functions of the current office in terms of community engagement, the multilingual information network, the ethnic communities development fund that we had increased eightfold in the last term. But we're also looking at what some of the new functions of that ministry will be. It will have, for the first time, a chief executive whose sole purview will be lifting the well-being of our communities. A CE who will be able to sit at the public sector table with the chief executives of other government agencies to influence the government's work program to benefit our communities. And I'm determined that ultimately that ministry will meet the needs and lift the aspirations of our communities. So now, the Office of Ethnic Communities is out in the field testing what we've heard with our communities. I wanted to make sure that while the direction of the new ministry was set by our diverse ethnic communities, that we weren't starting from scratch because we have heard from many of you over the years. We've heard what's important for our people, but I wanted to make sure that we went out there and tested it because we need to sort of focus on some of the main target areas where we can provide some tangible change to lift well-beings across, and we didn't want to do everything. Practically every issue affects our communities, but we need to be a little targeted so that we can make progress in specific areas. That's what we're testing with our communities. Finally, as the Associate Minister for Social Development and Employment, I lead the government's rather ambitious work program on social cohesion, looking at what social cohesion means for Aotearoa New Zealand, based on the principles of Te Tiriti o Waitangi, Te Ao Māori values, values that transcend communities from my perspective. This has come out of the Royal Commission of Inquiry into the Christchurch mosque attacks, 44 recommendations that the government has agreed in principle. Looking at how do we, what is it? We have a level of it, we've seen it as Michael mentioned in the aftermath of the March 15th attacks and again during lockdowns. What is it and how do we strengthen it? So that is a piece of work that we're embarking upon as a government as well. And I just wanted to leave those two initiatives with you to, be, to get involved in when the time is right. The time is right for the ministry, by the way. So if you do want to get involved with that, the information's on the OEC website. And there are sessions across the country. So please do have your say and encourage others who um, fall within the purview of the ethnic community's uh, new ministry to have their say as well. But once again, can I thank PIF and Michael for the opportunity to be here, to say a few words, to meet you all, and to wish everyone who's observing Ramadan a blessed month. Ramadan Mubarak once again. Noreda, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā katoa. Thank you.